Hello, hello, hello. Here we are. My story, Very Normal People. As we usually say to you, we will bring the best and new guests. And today we have Sean Alley. He's a comedian. Welcome, Sean, to our show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here, but I'm a New Yorker. I'm happy to be anywhere except the subway. <laughs> so, uh, is it is it snowing now in New York? Let me look. Nope. Uh, it stopped a few hours ago, but we have about a half a meter of snow on the ground. <laughs> we we can we can learn a lot of things about New York, but for you, you have to tell us who are you. Uh, my name is Sean Eli. I've been a professional stand-up comedian for about 18 years. And before that, I worked in a bank. And I am I chose happiness over money. Okay. I've been working in a bank, by the way. And I don't see any connection with... Uh... There is an end. <laughs> <laughs> There's no connection. And that's why I quit the bank, because I couldn't. You know, it was too boring for me. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I didn't hate it, but you, I didn't right? want to. I didn't hate it, but I didn't want to do it forever. Mm, I see what I mean. So, when when did you start uh, to perform? About 18 years ago, I took a comedy class, and then I started performing in comedy clubs. And six years later, I gave up on my day job, and now I do comedy full time. Mm. So. Uh, which are some of the countries that you have been performing? Which are some of the what? I'm sorry. Countries that you have been. Countries. Oh, okay. Um, all, all over the U.S. I performed in Ireland, the U.K., the Netherlands, South Africa. I performed in Australia, New Zealand, and Thailand. And I was going to go to more countries except the pandemic hit. So that's going to have to wait another year. Mm. So you have to post not, not Greece yet, but I hope to. Yes, we're looking forward to see you here. I'm going to book half of that with my friends. <laughs> yes, you can hire me to come to Greece. You just have to find people who speak English. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, which is your favorite country to tell your jokes? I, you know, I think Ireland was my favorite country. I think I did the best in Ireland. There's not a lot of comedy in Ireland, so they really seem to like me there. Yes, yes, that, that's correct. I haven't seen uh, the Irish people so, let's say, to have so fun. Scottish, yes, they do have. English, yes, they have fun, you know, and humor. But Irish are a little bit... <laughs> hmm. Well, there aren't that many Irish comedians, I guess. So they, they like Americans and they even sometimes like British people to go there and make them laugh. Yes, they do, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, tell us about your best performance that you have, you have had. It's hard to pick one that's the best. It's, you know, if I go on stage and lots of people laugh at, at my jokes, I have a great time. I like doing it. So pretty much most of my shows are the best. I and mean, I get paid to make people laugh. It's, it's the best job in the world. <laughs> so you laugh, you make people laugh, and you get paid as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, what about the worst performance that uh, you had? I did a show at a singles event a few years ago, and I was pretty new. And I told the woman organizing it, you don't want a comedian for the singles event because the people going there just want to meet each other. They don't want to listen to some guy talk. And she said, no, no, it'll be fine. And I got there, and they weren't paying attention because they were just looking at each other, hoping to meet each other. They didn't want to listen to me. And at the end, the guy came up to me, and he said, you need better material. And I said, you know... My material is fine. I've been doing this for a few years. I've been making a lot of people laugh. And I used to get paid to write jokes for other top, you know, for top comedians. What I needed was a more, recep more receptive and nicer audience. And clearly not people like you, because what kind of a jerk are you to come up to a stranger who's doing his best and just dump on him and say, you know, you're no good at your job. Why are you so mean? So that was not a fun night. Maybe it was. It was his the worst night, you know. He was rejected in the. <laughs> in the maybe, maybe. Well, maybe some. You know what it was? Maybe he was looking at some woman, and as soon as I finished, she walked away with somebody else. 
Maybe that was you. Maybe you walked away with the woman he wanted. Now he's oh, upset. No. <laughs> no, I haven't taken some any any woman at the moment. Don't worry. No, uh, no this was fifteen this was fifteen years ago. Okay. Uh, maybe. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, please, can you tell us a little bit about the difference between a big and a small audience? Oh yeah, big audiences are so much easier and so much more fun. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a thousand people in a room laughing, you tell a joke and they laugh and the whole room fills with laughter. And it takes a long time for the laughter to die down. So you might get 20 seconds of laughter on a joke that would get three seconds in a small, a small audience. But one of the best shows I ever had was, it was a weekday, I think it was a Thursday night between Christmas and New Year's during a snowstorm. And only three people showed up at the club, but they were a great audience of three people. And I was new and that was a great time. So there are comedians who'll show up and be angry that there aren't very many people there, but they're angry at the wrong people because they're angry at the people who didn't show up and they should be angry at the people who didn't show up. So uh, do you write your own jokes or use also other people's? Um, almost every comedian writes their own jokes, except If you're on television doing a monologue, you know, 10 minutes every night, you need a writing staff. Or if you're, let's say, Chris Rock and you want to come out with a new HBO special every couple of years, you may have a writing staff. But pretty much everybody else writes their own jokes. So what kind of, uh, what kind of style is your joke? What, what do you like to talk about in your jokes? What is your favorite character, let's say? You know, it's funny. When I started out, the class instructor, I took a comedy class, the instructor used Bill Cosby as an example. And Bill Cosby a story, was a storyteller. And, and I would watch him and think, I wish I could tell stories. I wish enough in my life was funny that I could tell stories about it. And when I started out, I was more of a one-liner comic and, and not a storytelling comic. And later I realized there was a lot of stuff in my life that's funny that I could tell stories about. And I don't want to be like Bill Cosby because he's a rapist who's in jail. So <laughs> I guess it worked out in both ways. I got to be a storyteller and I don't have to be Bill Cosby. So uh, if somebody wants to become a comedian, uh, what are the first steps that he has to Well, comedians will debate this. I say start the way I started. Take a comedy class. You'll learn in a supportive environment. You'll have a teacher who'll help you learn how to write jokes, how to structure jokes, how to perform, how to hold a microphone. And you'll be, you'll be in a supportive environment when you start doing shows because the class graduation is in front of your friends and family. And you'll also have other people who are starting out with you and, and you'll make friends. But there are other comedians who will say, no, you can't learn to be funny. You just have to go on stage and fail and learn from your mistakes and just keep doing it over and over again until you get better. But I would say a comedy class can save you the first six months of mistakes. So if you can take a class, why not? Okay. Uh, which is the, let's say, the most difficult uh, part of, for a comedian? Is the first part, the middle part, or the last? Yeah. Of this, of a yeah, show or, or in a show, career? In show, yeah, on a show, yeah. In a show, the, the, the first part is the hardest part. When you get on stage, especially if you're the first comedian up, you've got to make people laugh who haven't been laughing. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get them laughing right away. Once you get them laughing, it's usually a lot easier. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're any good, you can hold their attention for as long as you're on stage. So the beginning of the show is the hardest part. And the first comedian on stage has the hardest job because he's got to take an audience that's not laughing. Even I've discovered if the first comedian is terrible and nobody's laughed at him, he hasn't gotten any laughs. If you're the next comedian up, you think that's hard. Sometimes it's easy because you just have to let them know you're not the same person that they just hated for 10 minutes. I did a show. I was at an audition a few years ago at a comedy club in New Jersey. And the guy before me was a terrible, not only was he a terrible comedian, but he was racist. And he was just mean and the audience hated him. And I could feel the energy of their anger as I got on stage. 
And I just got on stage and I looked down at the audience and I said, I'm not him. And that's all it took. I just had to be somebody different from what they are. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do people get all of your jokes? Not everybody gets every joke, and it really depends on culture. So in Ireland, they loved me. I was in South Africa, and the cultural difference, for whatever reason, made it much harder. So I have a joke where I say, I went on a date last night. The wine bar was full. So instead, I took my date to the thrift shop. So for the, the cost of two glasses of wine and a cheese plate, I got her an end table, two lamps, and half an encyclopedia. A through L. I figure if we're still dating when she finishes it, I'll, I'll buy her the other half. And then I say, I thought the date was going well because she invited me upstairs to her apartment, but it turns out not to fool around, she needed help carrying everything up the stairs. And they just, you know, every other country I've performed that joke, they were fine. South Africa, they just didn't. It's not that they didn't even think it was funny. They didn't see what the punchline was. They're like, what's funny about buying a woman's stuff instead of going on a date? And to me, that's the joke, right? Is why do I have to buy her something that, like alcohol and food that disappears when I can buy her something she can use? But wasn't in their culture. They just didn't understand they have a different culture for sure. Yeah. So, uh, how many punch lines would you like? Or, I mean, it's better to have in a joke. As many as possible. You got to start off with people laughing. But, I mean, it's being a stand up comedian and telling jokes to your friends are very different. I'm not saying one is better or harder than the other, but they're just very different. Because your friends have the patience. If you're telling a joke that's, you know, two minutes before you get to a punchline, They're going to sit and listen to you in in a comedy club or a theater. You can't do that. You really need to get people laughing and you've got to you've got to at least get a laugh every 30 seconds or people get impatient. So it's it's just different. But if you can get a laugh every 10 or 15 seconds. That's good. That's a good number. So uh, about this time that we are now, you know, everybody inside and all this horrible time we have. The world has never been, I mean, for, let's say, at least for our generation, it has never been so bad. So, do you see, let's say, jokes and humor, let's say, as a need? Yeah, there, it's definitely more important now. People are very stressed. And I give you an example. Comedians hate outdoor shows. I say the secret to comedy is a, is a hundred people in a room that fits 70. Because you really need a lot of people in a small room because you want the laughter to echo. You really need to hear the, the audience feels so much more comfortable laughing when they hear everybody else laugh. Right. And an outdoor show, you don't have that. The laughter just disperses. It dissipates. So outdoor shows are hard. But I've done outdoor shows during COVID and they've been easy. It's been much easier because people really need to laugh. And so I've done outdoor shows that felt like indoor shows where everybody was laughing at it. Even on Zoom, I've been making people laugh where they can't hear anybody laughing. <laughs> Because you mute them all, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the secret to, for comedians to do a Zoom show is you have to pause and give people a chance to laugh because it may take two or three seconds just because people aren't comfortable laughing when they don't hear anybody else. Yeah, and sometimes they don't get it at the moment, though, and then they get it, uh, you know, it, it keeps on with that. <laughs> Yeah, you got to wait sometimes two or three or four seconds. So, is John funny just on stage or also off stage? You know, some comedians are great on stage and not funny off stage because they're good at writing, but they're not spontaneously funny. I think I'm I'm good off stage. There are times I'll be at, you know, or just waiting to buy something and something will happen and I'll have a joke for that. The hard part when you're a comedian is everybody expects you to be funny all the time. And I'm, nobody's funny all the time. Sometimes I'm just not comfortable or there's nothing funny to say. And what about you when you are sad? You're not I try not to be sad, but, you know, I, I try to cheer. Yeah. I try to be positive, but people get sad sometimes. Yeah. 
or it's let's say it helps you let's say finding something funny around the i don't know where you can be and and then you just pass it let's say this it helps thing. yeah i can cheer myself up a little bit if i think of something funny but i can't watch you know i can't use my existing jokes to cheer myself up because i already know the punchlines and comedy is about surprise mm -hmm. right so who is your let's say your favorite comedian well, there's a lot of very funny people in New York, and if I named them, you would not have heard of them. But if you want people I look up to, I would say Robert Klein and Jay Leno are two comedians I admire. And I think most people have heard of them. So, Maybe not in Greece. <laughs> of course not. Not here. So, uh, what is the best compliment that you have taken from your uh, audience? I think be oh I, I know this so I used to do it I used to do shows at a cancer center Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York and we would do shows for the patients and their families and that would be so hard because you'd see people they'd be in pain that have tubes sticking out of them and connected to machines that were beeping and they would just look so sad and then they wouldn't laugh because everything just hurt. And after a show, and it's really hard to do those shows because nobody laughs. But after one of those shows, a guy came up to me and he said, coming, this is the first time in three months that I've seen my wife smile. And I'm like, oh, that's the best compliment I've received. Yeah. And unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to ask him his name because the hospital has a very strict privacy policy. So I don't even know who it was. I see. I see. Okay. Oh. Uh, can you do you think you have something else to tell us before we finish yeah go to my website okay <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> my website is brainchampagne.com there's not just videos of me on stage there's a page called expired comedy and it has about 50,000 words worth of jokes, which is a lot of comedy material. 50,000? 50,000. I'll give you an idea. An average novel is 100,000 words. Wow. So picture a half of a novel, but just all jokes. Wow. It's and it's free. And you can also sign up for my email list where you'll get, a, you know, original comedy every month. I will. You will see my email from, okay. <laughs> from tomorrow morning. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, what would you like? What would you like to say to the people? Let's say that you have one or two minutes to say something to the world. What would you say to, to the whole world? Listening to you. Yeah, everybody's listening to you. All TV shows, everybody's like the cameras, and everywhere is like your face, your background, your thing, and you are ready to. Safe. Be nice to people, be positive, encourage people to chase their dreams. And even if they're not good at it when they start, please encourage them because nobody's good at anything when they start out. So be positive instead of negative and, and you know, look for things to be grateful for. And go to every comedy show you hear about because com comedians need to earn a living. Yes, 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 that's correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it was it was a joy for me, and I, I'm really, you changed my, <laughs> my mood as well. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate for stopping by in our show, and we hope to have you again in our show. Thanks. It was good to be here. I hope to come back. <laughs> okay, guys, as we usually say, please, I will write all, uh, Sean, I will write all your details where people can find you, your email, whatever you have, website you said. And, guys, please, uh, if you really like, just go and subscribe, but not just to Sean, but also to our channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you very much again. Till next time, guys. See you. Bye. See you.